نگران کننده نیست خیلی کنندگان هست هست را جبی کالوش و دیولوژی گفرن بای الستان Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good day, everyone. We are here with Desmond's Dave Edwards for the service. <sighs> Good day to everyone. I would like to thank you all for coming out as you know the loss of a husband to be a father, a brother, a friend. For we could not predict the death that came unexpected. All we can do is comfort one another. In a time like this, before we have lost a part of us in some other way. To his wife Rebecca, be sure. In this time, for we are here for you. To my siblings, where there's only one, half, two, three, yeah. be strong for one another, be strong, pray for one another. That's all I can say. My dad was taken too soon, and he was robbed, and I don't believe it. I'm feeling I'm in a dream still, but life must go on. To his, to his siblings, to his brothers and his sisters, same thing I'm going to say again, be strong. Can't be, you can't be placing back no matter what. To his nieces, to his nephews, cannot be placed. Nobody can be placed there as one well Dave Edwards at all. This is not easy. God was a complete person, full of life and passion. He was high, energetic, and optimistic. At times, it could be difficult for others to understand his feelings, which was always changing rather quickly. God was very imaginative. He had no problem spending the entire day in his head, dreaming always away while watching his, his fishes that he loved very passionately. Yes, we all know that you love fishes, no matter what. If it's anything in the world, fishes was his main joy. And I guess Tyrone, they will take it over. Yeah. That found it easy to forgive, easy to forgive and forget. He was understanding and quiet at most. He was not for washing his, he was not for washing and cleaning his car 24 7 or soon as his baby. And next thing he likes to do. Everything he have, he cherish it. As this moon, like he no quiet. That's that fair. Which was what was also a normal daily plan of his route. We can always say sometimes we'll watch the we'll watch this one. Take a break and come take a rest. He was admire by the entire neighborhood for washing his car each morning and evening. So. 
as you can see, I can have those new ones. So for somebody to take my father, to take my father from us, take our brother, take our uncle, take our grandfather, it's very impossible to, to cook right about now. Yes, I am strong, no tears are running, because I've cried enough. All I can do, and I tell everybody, to, to my co-workers this, to my wife this, to everybody around me, that's when I bury my dad, and that's about it. There's no joy right about now for me. I can be home strong then, but some, some days it will hit me that I don't have a child to say, well, with my grandfathers, and I explain to them that he's not here. It is sometimes going to be hard for most of us because waking up every day knowing that he's not here, free back after Tyro, because as well tell everybody, Tyro will be the best of that life. I tell everybody the truth. You get the best, you get 12 years of that life because I'll say, Daddy, for me, Kirna, to me, that's it. Most of the times, they see him, but how often is this him? Time will get the best. That's why time will cry as much as, as, every, as a young boy. So, he did for him, he's the youngest. Try the best, and siblings to always be there for one another. And I'll say again, like I'll say again, we all love him. We try to check up on as much as possible, but we lost that in the morning. I didn't deserve this, and I tell my crew because I'm there, my father didn't deserve this. No matter what he doing, no matter what he did, he didn't, die, he didn't, he didn't deserve to die like this. Daddy was admired by others for being a free and open. I don't see that anyone in me good or bad things. But when it comes to his secrets and deeper feelings, Daddy has a tendency to keep those on the lock and keep them. Which we know very well. Because meeting my siblings was, I think, was one of the most well, unexpected moments. We could design GTA, me and the other in the same school. Um, but my, my second brother, when I grew up with him, he had in time into Bego, and then he came and showed me a picture of him as a baby, so I think he was already going on here, so that was like, master secrets. <laughs> it's like, I don't believe it was. But, as I said, I was my dad, I always love him, no matter what, no matter what we go through. In these past few years, I was always love him, my dad, I don't know to them. And I say again, I see him only once. He was always there. Always, always there. That was, that was that. He tried his best. He tried to stay. He tried his best. He tried his best. He was always here to pass a smile on everyone's face. You could call him today or tomorrow. He might promise he's coming. He might come. He might come. If he comes, he might call and say he can't make it. That's that. It's going to be very hard to overcome for most of us. But he will be truly missed a lot. But I know for sure, you'll never get over it. No matter what. So, Dad, my siblings, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, everyone, be sure that this time, this is a crucial time, I tell everybody, but I couldn't have rather take my dad. I can be much better. I know more than simple then. This is how we have to do. 
So I tell me if you want to come out, you all have a blessed day. God, and they watch it up above, and they're proud of all of us. Now it's time for me to take over. I love you, Dad, and until next time.
I, I, I heard about Kuzel, but I was not looking for the splitting image of his father. Glory be to God, I said to this one person, he could never sit down at night, otherwise he would have been arrested. So God bless you, please, to meet all of you. My heart is filled with love and joy to meet so many people, to see Rafi's children as well. I, I knew Rafi, um, Uncle Rafi died when I was young, and, and I never knew that the kids, and I got to glimpse, it's sad that we have to meet under these kinds of conditions and circumstances, but I am your cousin, I love you, and I am praying for you and will be praying for you. Let me draw our attention to the book of Amos, Amos chapter number 4, Amos chapter 4 and verse number 12. The word of God says, Therefore thus will I do to you, O Israel, and because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. I read again Amos 4 and verse 12. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. I want to speak on the topic, prepare to meet thy God. And this is something all of us have to do. As long as we were born of a woman, as long as we came into this earth and we have the breath of life in our bodies, we must prepare to meet our maker. The word of God says in Amos, prepare to meet thy God. Here are five powerful words. Five powerful powerful words. Prepare to meet thy God. It is a warning for all people. No one is exempted from this warning. In the text that we just read is a warning for all people. It's a warning that is always relevant. Once you are living, once you are breathing, you're in the land of the living. This warning is a relevant warning. Every day that we wake up, we ought to say to ourselves, I must be ready to meet my God. I must be prepared to meet. We must live life with these five words in mind. I am preparing to meet my maker. Because like it or not, we are going back to the one who created man. The one that saw man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into man's nostril. So man became a living soul. We are going back to him. Therefore we must prepare to meet him. This warning is not just relevant, but this warning will never be cancelled. As long as life exists on the earth, man who lives on the earth must continue to prepare him or herself to meet with his or her maker. Amen. Prepare to meet thy God. Why is it so important to heed this warning? After all, we are in the habit of disobeying warning signs and we don't care how they warn us, we disobey. And we see it right now in the COVID-19 pandemic, how all they say social distance and all, they're talking about no gathering persons, just will not listen persons, because we are in the habit of not paying any attention to warnings and warning signs. We break traffic lights, we, we, we jaywalk, we do all sorts of stuff. Because it's our habit to do so. But I'm saying to us, it is important that we take heed to this warning. If there is a warning you must take heed of, it's a warning to prepare to meet thy God. Why? Because we must meet God. Whether you believe in God or not. Whether you think there is no God and when you get you're done, that is your business. But, but you must meet God because God does not give an empty warning. God does not just give a warning for warning's sake. God does open his mouth and talk and warn you for no reason. God's warning is never empty. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 and 27 and it is appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment it is appointed unto man once to die and after death there is a judgment. So contrary to public opinion, when you're dead, you ain't done. This year finished for this man. Life has just begun. He has left time and he has entered into eternity. And as we celebrate 
Desmond's life today as we celebrate in this ongoing ceremony for our, our father, our uncle, our husband, brother, whatever Desmond might have been to each of us. As we celebrate it, we know that death is not the end of it. The Bible says after death, there is a judgment. It does not finish. That's the contrary to public opinion when you are dead, you are not done in fact life has just begun. The Bible also tells us in Romans chapter 14 and verse number 12 so then every one of us shall give an account of ourselves to God. We will answer to Almighty God. Every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of our lives. So therefore we must prepare to meet God because we will meet, we will meet God. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 10 says, For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We will all answer. We will all stand before God. We must meet God. Glory be to God. There will be that great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20 speaks of a white throne judgment. John the Revelator writing on the eyes of Patmos says, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things that was written in the books according to their works and verse number 15 declares and whosoever name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire and your name cannot go in a book of life unless you have life. How do you get life? The Bible says he who has the son has life. And he who does not have the son of God does not have life. So I encourage all of us to get Jesus and get life. Because if you don't have life, your name will not be written in a book of life. You could sing how oh, much blessed assurance in your funeral. If you didn't have Christ, you don't have life. Amen. We like to bury everybody and sing because it's the favorite song. It's the traditional song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. When he was never yours. <laughs> yeah. We like to sing it. It sounds good. But, we, but, but it was never yours. You might have had 2,000 friends on Facebook, but Jesus, who's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, was not your friend. So I want to challenge all of us because I'm not speaking to my cousin this uh, afternoon. I'm speaking to those of us who are still in the land of the living to get Jesus. Hear me believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved before the appointment of death comes for all of us. And it's coming. Death is making its way to our home. It may be long in coming for some, but it's coming. It is appointed unto man who wants to die. It's the most important. It's the most important appointment. There is no other appointment that is as important as this appointment that we have to meet with our maker. Prepare to meet thy God. It's a common meeting. We cannot escape. You could escape almost every other meeting. You could call. You could cancel. You could postpone certain meetings. But this meeting with God, you cannot cancel. You cannot postpone this meeting. You must meet God. Secondly, we must prepare to meet God. And I love the words. He says, prepare to meet thy God. If we could have gone to God in any condition, if we could have picked up ourselves in our sinful, wretched, carnal state and just go before God, it would have been all right. If we, if, if we could have gone to God unholy, unrighteous, immoral and just go, no, the Bible says you must prepare. Not only that God does not give an empty warning, but God does not command the unnecessary. God will never say to us, to do something that is unnecessary. 
Because preparation is necessary, God says, prepare to meet your maker. Because it tells me, in our natural state, we are not ready to meet God. Re religious Nicodemus came to Jesus by night with all his religion and sometimes we boast about our religious connection and say I is a Catholic and I is what and I is that and I is the other and I born this and I will die this. You were only born sinners. We were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity and sin. Our mothers conceived us. Therefore we must be. Jesus said to religious Nicodemus you must be born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven may want to go as far as say enter the Bible stop it short at only sight you can't see it that's how serious Jesus says hey you, unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of God he says how can a man be born when he's old can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and then be born Jesus says no that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit man or not I say unto you, you must be born again. So we must prepare. There must be preparation because God will not command the unnecessary. If preparation was not necessary, God would have not said to prepare. So some mistakenly feel they are ready because they were born in a Christian family. That will make this man on our way and what's ready, you know. All of us were born in a Christian family. But we go on astray, we went, we own, we live in all kind of crazy, heathen, ungodly, unrighteous life. That don't make us ready for heaven because our mother and fathers are saved and, and our father was a pastor. No! I have three kids and I tell them every day, make sure all is safe. Because I cannot tell God, I cannot make no recommendation to God for all you to get through to heaven. Sure. Make sure you know God yourself. And some people mistakenly feel that they are ready because they were born into a Christian family. They were born in a civilized nation where nobody can claim that no more. There are no civilized nations on the earth. The kind of madness, this tells us that we are uncivilized. The way they gunned down my cousin, the way they killed Desmond tells me that this nation in which we live is uncivilized. COVID-19 done killing so much of people and the government still finding time to come out and kill people. Yeah. But know that judgment is mine, said the Lord to the perpetrators. I will repay. God will answer. Hey. And finding yourself to come out, shut down, lock down. As I used to, man, born with your family, you will come back and kill our next man family in a time where we are not even allowed to grieve properly and mourn the dead. Have a nice way, can have all your family come to prop you and support you all your wicked. And I make no approach for saying that. But the wicked is standing in slippery places, the Bible says. When he thinks he stands, he falls. So be warned. God is looking at you. And God will hold you accountable. Yeah. Let me tell you, we must prepare to meet God. And we mistakenly feel that we are ready because we were born in a Christian family. And we were born in a civilized nation. That we were baptized and we are members of a church. Even being baptized and being a member of a church don't make you ready to meet God. There are a lot of people in church who baptize and they have membership in church. But their names are not on the roll which will be called up yonder. Jesus says many will come and say, Lord, Lord, haven't I cast out devils in your name? Haven't I heal the sick in your name? And his reply will be, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I know you not. Notice he says, many will come and say, I have cast out devils, I have healed the sick. No ungodly man can say that. It has to be Christian people saying that. People who are in church and involved in the activities of the church, but not genuine and committed to Jesus. He says, depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I know you not. I cannot say nothing to my cousin. This is the shell that my cousin lived in. My cousin is already gone. So I want to speak to those of us that are alive to ensure that when our time comes and we find ourselves in a box on the back, we would know God. I always tell people this in every funeral I do. We don't like to look up when we live in. 
The Bible says in Psalm, lift up thine eyes unto the hill, for whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord, which makes heaven and earth. And all of most people when they live in, they don't take time to look up. But when you're dead, it is put you on your back to look up. These undertakers wicked. If some of us could have talked when we did, we say, hey, don't put on the back. Put on the belly. I don't sleep on my back. I sleep on my belly. But they put you to look up. And when you look up and you realize that help was available all the time. And you never looked in the direction where all your help come from. You will cry. That is one of the most tormenting things in death. You're on your back looking up where you should have been looking when you was living. And that would be a rude awakening to know that all the help you needed, all the assistance we needed to make it on this earth and live this life and live a life and is right and pleasing to God was upstairs right there. Lift up thy eyes onto the hill. From whence cometh thy help? Thy help comes from the Lord which makes heaven and earth. So I'm saying to you, look up before they put you to look up. Look up now. Look up while you are in the land of the living. Don't wait until they put you in a position where you can't turn, you can't twist, you can't do nothing about it, but to look up. With the regrets too. Because there is consciousness in death. Remember that rich man in purple and fine linen that fared sumptuously. And the beggar Lazarus by his gate full of sores desiring to be fed with the crown that fell from the rich man's table. The Bible says, moreover the dogs came and licked the sores of the beggar. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abram's bosom. And the rich man also died and in hell. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Father Abram afar off. And cried, saying, Father Abram, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am Tormented in these flames, Abraham answered and said, Son, you in your lifetime receive as good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. But besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed to a day that will come from you unto us. Care not, neither can they that will come from us to you. He says, Yeah, what? I have five brothers. Send them back to my father's house. Let him warn them. Not to come here. Abraham says they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, they have the preacher. So I want to hear the preacher this afternoon. Let them hear them. He says, no, they will not hear Moses nor the prophet. But if someone comes back from the dead, they go here. He says, if they are not persuaded with Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone comes from the dead. And if when we go home later, this man come walking up the road. If you don't know Jesus, get to know Jesus. Prepare to meet thy God. Hear me. Many people feel that I live in an upright life. Me no bandit. Me no thief. I no criminal. I no rapist. So you feel because they live in an okay or oh, alright life. You are alright. No. Except you are born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God. So you may not be no bandit, you may not be no bagon, you may not thief, yeah, you might not have a deputy. Yeah. You know, parents say a deputy is essential to keep the living. If I tell us, well, I know, I know horn, I live in God, I faithful to one woman or one man as the case may be. And you're, and you're saying that, but the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 64 and 6, but we all, we are all like an unclean and all our righteousness is like filthy rags. We all fade as the leaf and our iniquities like the wind has taken us away. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. Unless you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you are not prepared to meet God. I'm saying to you, prepare to meet God. The Bible gives us some examples of unprepared people. Adam and Eve hiding after they sin in Genesis the third chapter verse 8 they hide themselves behind the trees of the garden and when God listen you will die if you get it you might not survive and we're risking chances with death and when life is over we say far anytime you want to hide from God we can't get to come at your service you could talk everything else but you ain't talking nothing about God tells me you are unprepared Adam and Eve was unprepared King Belshazzar 
when God wrote on the wall of the king in Daniel chapter 5, Mini, mini, take care of you fasting. You've been weighed in a balance and found wanted. And your kingdom has been divided between the Medes and the Persians. The Bible says his knees buckle and his loins loose. King Belshazzar messed himself. He got a bowel movement. Instantly, when God wrote on the walls of the king for taking the vessels that belonged to God's house and drank wine with his wives and his concubines and his commanders, God wrote on the wall. And in that said night, King Belshazzar died. Many time you have to get on like Belshazzar, your knees buckle, your loins loosen, and your countenance change. You ain't ready. Belshazzar was unprepared to meet God. Saul on Damascus Road was unprepared as well when he saw a light brighter than the noonday sun in Acts chapter 9. Fell from his horse. And God says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He says, who art thou, Lord? He says, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He says, what will thou have me to do? In that condition on Damascus Road, Saul was unprepared. But thank God, he made it right with Jesus. And he was ready to meet God. Finally, let me close. And say, we must, we can prepare to meet God. Not only we must prepare, uh, but we can prepare to meet God. Because God will not command the impossible. I love that about God. He will not command the unnecessary, but he also will not command something that is impossible. If you can't prepare to meet God, God will never say, prepare to meet me. And because God knows that we can prepare to meet him and to be with him, God says, prepare to meet with me. Yeah? Because God has prepared a way for us to be right with him in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 5 that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God made a way for us to be right with him. And he arose offering us salvation. So Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And verse number 13 says, and whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want to challenge all of us to begin to call on the name of the Lord and we'll be saved and we prepare to meet him by faith. The Philippian jailkeeper asked Paul and Silas a question in Acts chapter 16 verse 31. When the earthquake shook the foundation of the prison and everyone's bands was loose, he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou will be saved and thy household. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1 tells us, Therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can prepare to meet God by faith in Jesus. Like the prodigal son who returned home. Here, confession of sin brings forgiveness. The prodigal son in that big pen, wanting to eat big food, wasted all his substance on riotous living, and he came to his senses in a big pen. I don't know where you may be today. Don't know what's your condition. Don't know how far you have journeyed from God. But today you can make your way back home. He said in that big pen, I will arise and go to my father. And I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and went to his father. And the father in that scripture is a picture of God himself. The Bible says when he was yet a great way off. And maybe we are a great way off from God. Our, our position right now is far. 
We're not knowing near God. Let's get, let's draw nigh to Him. The song says, if the word says, we draw nigh unto Him, He will draw nigh unto us. While He was yet a great way off, the Father saw Him and had compassion on Him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and he says father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants but the father said to the servant put the best robe on him put the ring on his finger put shoes on his feet and bring it the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was lost and is found he was dead and he's alive let's make our way to God before it is too late. Let's ensure that we are prepared because we can prepare to meet God. What good news we can prepare. Like good news, you know, we can prepare. I love that. There was a time in my life when I was unprepared. I was living crazy. Wine, woman, and song, drugs, and guns. My cousin was nothing like us. I was outside doing a lot of crazy stuff. And at age 19, I heard this gospel message. And I gave my heart to Jesus. I've been preaching for the last 29 years of my life. But I know he's 51, so I'm 51. I'll be 52 come September the 14th in the will of the Lord. I was living crazy. A lot of, in fact, almost all the brothers was kind of half crazy. But God touched our hearts. God touched our lives. And at age 19, I walked in the doors of a church and everybody laughed at me. They said, you can't make it. Is a woman, you see, you're going for church girl now. You fell up with all them girl outside. You see, I, I, I did not see a woman, I saw Jesus. I saw the Lord. It's been 25 years. I was messed up. I was done. I couldn't read. I could not write. I could not spell. I passed on an entrance with any mini mini go and hey fiddle diddle. He cut on the fiddle. That's why I passed on an entrance. But look what the Lord has done. When I tell you I have no regret for serving God and giving my life to God. I, I needed it all my heart. I've been married for the last 25 years of my life, three kids. God has been extremely good. Prime ministers pay my plane ticket to travel. I am invited by prime ministers to preach. I am put up in five star hotels and Lemo and police escort takes me to my appointment spot to share. For my dunce head. For my little black boy on the corner, I didn't want to listen. Who figure I was the rooster in the village of the Ram Goat. I was Ram Singh Charmadi in the Ram from Sarah. Yeah? I was Balki Suni, Bossa Chun in the wedding, and run away with Dulai. I was living crazy. But thank God for Jesus. Let me say to all of us that we can prepare to be God. We can get our lives in order and serve God. King Hezekiah was told in the book of Kings, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Let me say to all of us, those who are viewing, if our lives are not in order, let's begin to set our lives in order. Because this appointment that was untimely, as we may say, will come to all of us. Whether we get on time or we get out of time, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death, the judgment. In conclusion, what have you done to prepare? Have you responded to his love? Have you responded to God's love? If you want to prepare, respond to the love of God. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who so ever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So come to him with all your sins. I come When I came to Jesus, I went with all my sin. The song says, just as I am without one plead but that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou has bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come, just as I am. I come with my cussing ways, with all my rum, with all my revelry. I tell you, I never miss a carnival. It's wine down low. Deputy essential, wet me down, honey. You making joke. There's man never do that. You have a body. But we up on the central, this side of the family was a little crazy. So we were in everything. But I came to him with all my sin and Jesus accepted me and forgive me. And if you come to him today, he says, come unto me all ye that have labored and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So I urge you to come to him before it's too late. He will forgive you. 
and you will be prepared to meet him. And I guess all of us want to be prepared. So bow your heads. Bow your heads. I know somebody will be coming to give a closing prayer. But I want to pray for all the members of the family, those who are present, who are on the outside, those who are viewing us live on Facebook, across the U.S. and wherever, those up on the central side, I know all the cousins are gathered in the yard, viewing in Karani. Uh, all the brothers are outside, and with their emotions, not being able to come to Desmond's funeral service. Father, we thank you. We come before you as a family. The Edwards, we bring Rebecca's family before you as well. We know her family, the wife, her, her mother, the son, and all the other cousins and relatives to that side of the family that Desmond was attached to and married to, living with them. We pray for your comfort. We pray for your strength. We pray for your peace. We pray, God, your peace that passes all understanding will fill our hearts and lives today. As we go through this time of grief, this loss, in this time of bereavement, God, that your spirit will comfort us. You will give us the strength and the courage to go through it. Even after we have committed the, the body to the earth from whence it came, that God, you will be with us in the coming days and the coming years of our lives. As Scovel rightly says, we will never really get over this because I'm still dealing with the passing of my own brother, my father, and, and two of my brothers, because Desmond died and Donald died. So I'm dealing with the passing of two brothers and father and all these other grief. And it's been years. But I'm still battling with it. God, we pray that you will truly bring comfort to all of us in this time. Every branch, every link, and member of the family, that your comfort and your peace will show us and keep us to keep on living. In Christ's name. You want to tell them, Dara, that we are going to spend our time in message. And at this time, we will have some special music by the John Sisters.
Dave Edwards. Until we meet again, those special memories of you will always bring a smile. If only we could have you back for just a little while, then we could sit and talk again, just like we used to do. You always meant so very much, and always will do too. The fact that you're no longer here will always cause us pain, but you're forever in our hearts until we meet again. At this time, we now have the closing hymn where we all get to have fun. And I don't know about you, but after that timely message, I want to ensure that I am going to be in heaven. And I know that we all share that sentiment today. So I want us to practice how we'll be when we go to heaven. So feel free to dance, to shout, to clap. Let's all stand. This is the closing hymn. So those who outside, I want to hear y'all from inside. Those who are streaming, when I can't hear y'all, but make a joyful noise unto to the Lord. Amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we hold the Lord of heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all Thank you. 
cleansing of us, God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father. So that if we may die today or tomorrow, we yes. know that we will see your face again, God. So we thank you for the time that you would have loaned daddy to us. Yes, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. And we just ask that you give us the strength to carry on. We know that you are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we stand in a word that says, weeping may endure at night, but joy comes in the morning. Father, we look forward to the joy that comes in the morning. Father, we pray that you help us to remain faithful. To you in this time of yes, sorrow, Father. Yes, Father, we pray that as we head to the grave, we ask God that you will take us there safely. Yes, and God, give us the strength to put him down, God. Yes, and be with us. We thank you again for all the blessings that we would have gotten because of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Where 
But the scene of the whole thing, right? I don't believe. I 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 believe. I